सो गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स दिस इज़ डॉक्टर विनीत सहगल एंड आई एम योर ऑफथलमोलॉजी फैकल्टी इन अन अकेडमी ऐप यू कैन फाइंड मी ऑन द एजुकेटर टेलीग्राम ग्रुप दैट इज द लिंक दैट आई हैव गिवन हेयर यू कैन सब्सक्राइब टू द अन अकेडमी यूट्यूब चैनल यू कैन जस्ट क्लिक द बेल आईकॉन इन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड कॉर्नर यू कैन फॉलो मी ऑन द अन अकेडमी ऐप ऑल्सो एंड वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द फाउंडेशन बैच वे आर द लिंक इज गिवन सो वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू subscribe for the unacademy plus program you can do it with my coupon code that is dr vinith 10 to get 10% off so how you can see the lectures on the unacademy platform go to the unacademy app select the neat pg and then you would have in your right hand side corner you would be given the various classes that are being uh, done with the top educators and you can see whatever class that you want so there are a lot of free classes that are there you can get there and see what are the topics that you want and then if you want to subscribe to the neat plus program you can do it in the one month three month six month or 12 month course there are lot of payment options you can go to the payment option which you want and you can get a by getting my code that is dr vinit 10 you can get a 10% off in the total package so in this month we have done the fast revision of basics at 9 am we have done the throwback previous year questions at 7 pm at 9 pm we had quiz in 10 pm we were having uh, clinical mcqs and at 11 pm we were having image based mcqs so our foundation course would be starting on 18th of june this is the link given there so it's a 6 month course and we would end the course in the month of november so today in this session i would talk about the ophthalmology questions that are asked in the jipmer exam so the first question was a child presented with bilateral conjunctivitis okay the child presented with the bilateral conjunctivitis peeling of skin and fever since last 5 days so what is the presenting diagnosis in this case so whenever you get these type of questions you have to see what are the hints given so the first hint given was bilateral conjunctivitis the second hint that was given was peeling of skin skin and the third hint was the patient was having fever so what can be the possible diagnosis so you all know this is the possible clinical feature of the kawasaki disease which is a type of very good a vasculitis okay so it is a type of vasculitis where the presentation is usually in first decade of life and these patients have non exudative bilateral conjunctivitis they can have rash in their genital genital areas and usually after one week of fever they can have a peeling of skin peeling of skin okay remember another question that was asked last year was regarding the crohn's disease if they ask the most common ocular manifestation of crohn's disease then it is uveitis and remember for the oguchi disease there is a phenomena that was also asked which we have covered in our previous lectures that is mizuo phenomena okay where the color of the fundus changes from day to the night so in the night it is normal and in the day it is a greenish yellow tinge that comes from the fundus so the next question was an easy question that is most common cause of blindness in trachoma your options were trichiasis entropion corneal opacity and ars line so remember whenever they ask about the most common cause it is always corneal opacity okay so yes corneal opacity can be a manifestation of trichiasis and entropion but the cause of blindness is because entropion is a lid disorder it won't cause decrease in the vision but whenever there is a corneal scar or corneal opacity it would cause a decrease in vision so you must have seen my lectures where i have told you about the fisto classification so earlier the classification that was used was a mccallens classification now the classification that is used is the fisto classification in which o stands for opacity okay and another question they usually ask for trachoma is what is the drug of choice for trachoma 
remember if they ask about the drug of choice in trachoma in young adults now it is single dose azithromycin okay and the dose is 1 gram okay single dose 1 gram azithromycin is the drug of choice for trachoma the next question was which of the following is correct about hydroxychloroquine toxic to the photoreceptor cells bulls eye maculopathy may be directly affecting ganglion cells follow by direct ophthalmoscopy fundus examination every 5 years dose starts at 7.5 mg per kg so hydroxychloroquine which has got more importance now in this covid era also because of some trials remember hydroxychloroquine can be given for a long term treatment in the immunological disorders like rheumatoid arthritis so in these patients we have to take care of the eye as well because this drug hydroxychloroquine this is usually toxic not to the photoreceptor cells but to the rpe and ganglion cells okay so the answer here is b so it is not photoreceptor cells it is rpe cells and ganglion cells the third thing is follow up by direct ophthalmoscopy remember whenever you are seeing hydroxychloroquine there is an issue with the rp or the ganglion cells so i told you when i told about the macular disorders that in cases where you want to see the different layers of the retina you have to use an investigation which is called oct okay so we do not use direct ophthalmoscopy we use oct and we use visual field analysis okay because in visual field analysis you may get an annular scotoma okay the next option was dose started at 7.5 mg remember it is not 7.5 mg it usually started at 5 mg per kg okay so the question this question was having option b as a clear cut answer so if you can see here in this picture what happens in bullseye maculopathy there is central hyperpigmentation followed by the peripheral hypopigmentation if you all can appreciate here then the next question was which of the following is used in the management of wet armb so also called choroidal neovascular membrane okay so remember in choroidal neovascular membrane the options that i told you when i told you about the choroidal neovascular membrane the treatment options are either the thermotherapy or we can do a intravitreal anti vegf or we can do a photodynamic therapy okay so these are transpupillary thermotherapy or we can use intravitreal anti vegf and in the cases where there is a subfoveal armd this was a previous year question we can use a photodynamic therapy so the answer clear cut here is b that is intravitreal ranibizumab okay remember ranibizumab is the fda approved drug in these cases another fda approved drug is i told you aflibercept aflibercept is a type of vegf trap remember pan retinal photocoagulation we do it in proliferative diabetic retinopathy and not here antioxidants per se is used in those conditions where there is a dry armd and not a wet armd vitrectomy is done in cases where let's say there is a vitromacular traction or there is a vitreous disorder like vitreous hemorrhage or there is a retinal detachment which has proliferative vitreous retinopathy okay so the answer here is clear cut b here that is intravitreal ranibizumab okay the next question was a simple question that is most vital layer of cornea your options are epithelium endothelium stroma or desmoid membrane so the answer is very clear cut here what would be the answer yes it is endothelium so whenever they ask about the vital vital means that first thing it is doing a lot of metabolic work thing is it is not regenerating okay so once lost the patient would have been in a lot of problem remember 
in the epithelium what happens is yes it is also a metabolically very active layer it can regenerate on its own so this layer even if destroyed comes back also okay so yes it is vital but not as vital as endothelium which basically maintains the dehydrated status of the cornea and which is the kitchen of the cornea if the endothelial cells are destroyed like in the diseases like uveitis or intraocular surgeries or with age so this endothelium cannot come back what is the normal value of the endothelial cells it is 2500 to 3500 per millimeter cube okay so if these cells decrease even to a vital level let's say 1500 or 1000 the patient would have a hydrated cornea so there is a corneal swelling that comes okay so that's why the answer here is b that is endothelium so remember these questions are the jipmer style questions the actual questions would have been different but these were the topics that were asked so for the jipmer exam what i can recommend to you is it is very important if you can see most of the topics were those from the last year so last year last three year questions become very important whenever you are going to give an exam whether it's a jipmer exam whether whether it's a pgi exam or whether it's an aims exam and it's not just that you have to do the mcqs you have to do the that topic also because from any of the option they can ask another question so hope you would have liked the session thank you very much for watching the session subscribe to the unacademy need plus program with my code that is dr vineet 10 thank you very much have a good day jai hind let's crack it